the last couple of years, I have attempted once again after about 30 or 40 years of trying, of not trying, to do a garden. I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. Uh, uh, but I do like tomatoes. And I've been able to do some good with tomatoes. But, uh, so a gardener I'm not. But I know some of you probably are. You know all about the grafting and the, 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 the tree and all that. I, I, I pretty much answered questions many years ago in, uh, it's in school and about it because that's what I needed to do and then I forgot. You know, it's not what didn't interest me. And so this morning when we're talking, I'm not, I'm not coming from an area of expertise. But we'll be talking about the cutoff branches. Of course, it's not really about grafting of branches into a tree and making it, you know, whole. It's really talking about something else. And so, Paul goes into Romans the 11th chapter, Paul, verse 17, so we'll start this morning. Paul is using this as an analogy, one that they all do. Um, it's the parable of the olive tree. A parable, there's several parables in Spanish scripture. And the olive tree was the most useful, productive, and probably the most valuable tree in Israel. Therefore, it was precious to the economy and the welfare of the nation. And, and because of this, the nation's relationship to God was sometimes pictured as an olive tree. And so let's look in verse 17. And with that, and it says, And if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and you did become a participant of the richness of the root. The natural branches of that olive tree, the natural ones that were there, they actually grew on their own. Uh, that refers to Israel. And the wild olive branches refer to Gentile believers. Yeah, we're the wild ones. Uh, now, the olive, the olive tree here refers to God and having a right relationship with Him. Now, some of the natural branches, the ones that, were all, that grew up with the tree, some of them were cut off. And they were rejected, broken off. And they were rejected. Some Jews did not and still do not believe in Christ. Therefore, they're no longer attached to God. Some wild olive branches were grafted into the tree. Now, now notice that grafted in, it's a process of you taking a branch and actually attaching it to the tree and it grafts itself to it and becomes part of the tree. Note that the words... Thou or you or however your translation puts it is singular. Paul is not speaking to Gentiles as a whole. It's not as it's not it's the same with Israel. He's not talking to uh, he's he's talking to individuals here and not as a whole. Some Gentiles did not get grafted in. Most did not. Not all Jews got broke, were broken off. So it's not an either or type of thing. But he's talking about in general. The Gentile believer is said to have been a wild olive branch. And that all that means is not that mean that we're a bunch of wild and crazy people. Although that was the case in a lot of <laughs> a lot of but it means that we weren't part of the natural. We weren't we were something different. We grew up in a different in a different uh, atmosphere, a uh, different uh, society. The Jews grew up, and the idea the Jews, the Jews grew up with God and the law and knowing about God. 
The Gentiles were wild in the respect that they knew nothing about God, did not care. They, they're, they're, they're growing up with something much different, believing in heathen gods. And so he's talking about them being grafted in to the wild olive tree. The word wild means that the Gentiles were not part of the olive tree. They were not part of God. They were outside and estranged and alienated, alienated from the olive tree, which was God. And so the Gentile believer is now said to have been grafted into the olive tree. He is now attached to God. That is, he has a right relationship with God. And therefore, because of that, he gets to participate, partake of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. He gets all the benefits of the olive tree. Y'all know the process. The roots go into the ground and they get all the water and the minerals from that so it can grow. But when you're grafted into the fatness of the of the richness, if you will, of the olive tree, God, then you get all the benefits of that tree. Very simply. This means that the believer, whether Gentile or Jew, particularly talking about the Gentile believer, is fed and nourished by God, the olive tree. So the Gentile believer is grafted into the olive tree with the natural branches. And this is important to note for it means there's only one family of God, not two. Alright? There are not the Jewish believers and there are not the Gentile believers, but they are just the believers because they're all part of the same tree. They have been grafted in. You could use the other analogy here that's commonly used. They have been adopted into the family of God. Not two families, but one. So in verse 18, he says, Be not boasting about the branches. And if you are boasting, you are not supporting the root, but the root supports you. The Gentile believer. It's easy for us. We've got Christ. We, we believe you didn't. I, believe it or not, there are a lot of folks who do not, who, who feel that way about the Jewish people. We must not be arrogant and prideful over the Jews. We can't treat them as inferior being, beings simply because they deny Christ. This has happened. This has led to massacre, holocaust of the Jewish people over the years. The Gentile believers, which when I say Gentile believers, you've got to understand that's talking about us. <laughs> Has no right to elevate ourselves over the Jews or anyone else. And the reason here is, is seen, is clear. We were wild branches. Very wild. <laughs> we do not bear the same root as of Judaism. The root bore us, us. Christianity. We got grafted in. We became part of the tree and the root, God, started feeding us. We did not feed the root. The branch does nothing to feed itself. Apart from the, the tree itself, it dies. You only find life when you're grafted in and start receiving the nourishment from the tree. You see, if it had not been for the Jewish people, there would be no Christian believers. Yes, Paul is he is talking about a specific problem there in the churches of the day. The Christian believers, the Gentile believers, began to think themselves as superior to the Jews. 
But remember that God has separated the Jewish people first to be His children. And that never changed. We were the ones grafted in. It is even wrong to think that we're better or higher than anyone else. This principle goes beyond just Jews and Gentiles. We have a tendency at times because we are saved Christian believers who attend church and live good lives that we are better than everyone else. The arrogancy, the pride that we feel in knowing that we are in, we are in well, we are chosen. Yeah, we have. And we made the decision to accept His everlasting salvation to become part of the family of God, to be grafted in. But are we really better than everyone else? There's a tendency to believe that we are. And this is a warning for us to understand that no, we're not better than everyone else because God created all of us. Let's not be snooty. Let's not be high-minded. Let's understand fully that we, all we are, are lost sinners saved by the grace of God. There's no difference. Because when we come to Christ, He accepted us just as we were. But He refused to let us stay in that, stay in that predicament. So, in verses 19 through 21, it says, You will say then, the branch, this is the, talking from the Gentile perspective, you will say then, the branches were broken off so that I might have been grafted in. Well, by unbelief, they did break off and understood and continued to stand. Be not high-minded, but be fearful. Verse 21. For, God, for if God did not spare the natural branches, not in any way, neither will He spare you. <laughs> uh, there is a danger in Gentiles believing, think, believers thinking that they were more acceptable to God because they have replaced because they have replaced the Jews as the true followers of God. That that even that's even today that the church has replaced the Jewish people as as their as their God's choice or favored. They're saved that they, we feel that we're safe and secure in Christianity because we are the religion that acknowledges God's Son. And, and that's true. But somehow that makes us better people or better off. We gotta remember something though. Remember what this scripture says. Israel was not rejected by God. So you, know, you realize that, don't you? Israel was not rejected by God so that we Gentiles could replace them. That we might be saved. Israel was rejected by God for one reason. Unbelief. It was not... He did not use the Jewish people so that the Gentiles could have could be saved. Now, did he know? Yes. It, was that ordained? Probably yes. I, I, all that stuff that we want to ponder on. But let me put it like this. His intention was never for Israel to be rejected. His, his intention was fully for Israel to believe. You know, Israel was rejected by God because of unbelief. God did not and does not reject one people in order to save another. <laughs> that, that's not the way that He works. God reaches out to every nation, every people longing to be grafted into Him. There's not one particular people that He's in favor of more than the other. There is not one person that he is in favor of more than another person. There's not one class of people that he's in favor of of another person. 
another class of people. It just simply is not the case. He created all of us the same and wants us all to be saved. God accepts a person because that person believes in His Son, Jesus Christ. That's the criteria. The Jews did not believe. Some Gentiles did. A Gentile believer stands attached to the olive tree by faith. Not because of any goodness, not because of any merit or value within himself. He's grafted in and he receives everything, all the blessings from being grafted into the tree. And what he says here, and if God did not spare the natural branches, not in any way, neither would he spare you. So if God spared not the Jews because of their unbelief, how much more will he not spare us? <coughs> if we don't believe, we will not be spared any more than the Jews did not believe and they were not spared. The Jews were the natural branches. We are the unnatural branches. If he has any bias at all, it will be what? Towards who? <clears throat> the natural branches. The Jews had the godly heritage. We had the wild, ungodly heritage. The Jews had the, the fathers. The followers of the only living and true God. We had heathen and polyistic fathers. Polytheistic fathers. Fathers who created humanistic gods to suit their own fancy. Yeah, the Roman gods, the Greek gods. They were, they, these were the gods that they were worshiping. The Jews had the Word of God and the Savior, and we had neither. The Jews had the prophets of God, and we had the false humanistic priests of the world. So in light of this, and so much more depravity, we must guard against self-complacency and conceit. We must walk in the fear of God and humility. <clears throat> you see, God has given the Gentiles a special, <coughs> a special responsibility. A responsibility to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not because we're any more special than the Jews, but because the Jews as a whole rejected doing it. So what I'm saying is, even though God loves us so very much that He sent His Son to die for us, that if we believe in Him, that He will save us, it doesn't make us any more special than the Jew who is not believing. It just means that we have Christ who is our nourishment. Because we're grafted in. In verses 23 and 24. He says, in verse 23. He says, They that they also, that they also, if they may not continue in unbelief, that they may be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from, according to nature, the wild olive tree, and contrary to nature, you were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more they, according to nature, will be grafted into their own olive tree? He's talking about the restoration of Israel. Alright? He's talking about Israel as a whole, could be grafted back in after being cut off. Is that possible? Yeah. The resurrection, the restoration of Israel, though, is conditional. Note the word if. If they abide not still in unbelief. Genuine belief is the condition for salvation. A person has to run from his unbelief to belief in order to be grafted in and accepted by God. No person comes to 
that no person comes to God unless he believes in His Son, Jesus Christ. And God will be able to graft the Jews back into the olive tree. And two things are meant by this. God is able, because of His enormous love for His, for His, His people, God is able uh, and His power, because of His knowledge and His power, and because God is God, therefore He has unlimited knowledge and power. He knows when a man's heart is subject to Him and moving towards Him. He knows because who He is. He knows who believes and who doesn't. He knows just when to move upon a person's heart when it's time for that person to make that decision about Christ. He knows. Therefore, when the time comes, He has the power to stir the Jewish hearts to turn to Him in large numbers. There's not a whole lot of Jews turning to Him in large numbers right now. Time's not right. God knows when it's time. You know when that time is going to be? <laughs> it's, it, it's going to be when we're gone, guys. It's going to be when we're out of here. And the Jewish people in the ministry throughout the tribulation period, it will be the Jewish people who will be turning to Him. And the time will be right. They will endure to... You know the Jews are looking for, an anti for a Messiah right now, Right? And they're going to find that there will be one, or at least they think there's going to be one, and they will acknowledge Him. That Messiah will be called the Antichrist. And from that, you're going to find the Jews begin to turn. Specifically, 144,000. But that's not Jehovah's Witnesses, that's Jews. Okay? <laughs> or Mormons, or whoever else is using that 144,000 term. It's going to be Jews who turn to Christ. You remember the story of the Valley of Dry Bones? It looks like they're dead. But by the power of God. They become an army. This is the restoration. The, the branches that have been broken off the natural tree, olive tree, can and will be restored when they turn to believe. And the time will be right. You see, the grafting of the natural branches. The Jews is much more likely than the calling of the Gentiles was. Note the words, much more. Much more. How much more they, according to nature, will be grafted in one's own olive tree. You know, Paul is confident that God is not only able, but that God will graft the Jews back into the olive tree. Paul declares, proclaims that the Jews will turn to Christ and be restored into a right relationship with God. But I want you to understand something. Throughout all of this, there's only one thing, one condition, one commonality in it all. If they will believe. That's it. You must believe. Well, believe in what? That Jesus Christ is God's Son. That He came to this earth, lived a sinless life, went to the cross of Calvary, and at that cross He died as an atonement or a sacrifice for our sins. And we know by His death, His burial, and resurrection, that He lives even today and that we have the hope of eternal life if we believe. That's the Gospel. That's the good news. And it doesn't matter if you've been cut off from the branch, from the tree. It doesn't matter if you've been wavered this way or this way. 
It doesn't matter if you're Jew, you're Gentile, you're black, white, rich, poor. It does not matter. If you have faith in Jesus Christ and truly come to Him by faith, He'll grab you in. That's the point. I, 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 you know, he's making a specific point about Jews and Gentiles, but that point is the same for anyone. If you think that you are better than someone else, that person could never get grafted in. That person could never be saved. Oh, you are so wrong. Because we're basing our relationship with God on what we do. How good we are. <laughs> we can't have a relationship with God based upon how good we are, guys. The only relationship that we can have with God will be based upon how good He is. And that's the point He's making. Jews, look to Jesus. Gentiles, look to Jesus. Men, women, children, look to Jesus for your salvation. You know, there's, at first glance, you think, well, he's just talking to these groups. But no, he's not. He's talking to all of us. We sometimes can get so complacent and so high-minded as Gentile believers and looking at the rest of the world and saying, maybe not particularly Jews, but look at the rest of the world, oh, thank you, God, for not me not for, me, for allowing me not to be like them. <laughs> Let me go like this. There was a point in time in your life when God deemed it was time for you to be ready. Stirred your heart to actually hear and understand and to realize that you needed Him as Savior. Do you remember that time? I do. It was like a whole year He was talking to me. The most miserable year of my life, by the way. He was telling me you need to be saved. And I'm going, no, no, no. I'm not walking up here. I'm not going to walk up there. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. And for a whole year, He was stirring me to faith. The time was right. And I wonder how many people dealt with it like I dealt with it. Putting it off and putting it off the way God was dealing with you. There's a reason why God was dealing with you at that particular point in time because it was the right time. You need to know about it. You need to come to Him by faith. Not by, not by works. Not by being good. But by faith. It wasn't about you. It was about Him. We tend to make it about Him some way. I make it about us way too much. So this morning, is God stirring your heart? Is He calling you to come to know Him? Is He saying, put, my, put your faith and trust in me? Come be a part of the family of God. Be grafted in. And come to know the fatness and the richness of the tree of God. And that, he's, you won't have anything to do with it. You just got to say, yes, I'll, I'll let you do that. And he'll do it. So this morning, it doesn't matter what your past is like. It doesn't matter how terrible a person you've been. It doesn't matter how many times, God, you've rejected God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard the gospel and rejected it. If He's dealing with you right now, if He's stirring you right now, would you come and accept Him as Savior? Would you do that this morning? So as we stand and we prepare for an invitation, it's my prayer this morning that you'll understand what you need that you need not to be broken off, but to believe in Him, trust in Him, to be grafted into the family of God, to, be, uh, to become officially His child by being adopted into the family. 
It's only one family, guys. And that's those who believe. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. And it doesn't matter what religion you come from. It doesn't matter if you've never stepped foot in the church. If you come to know Jesus Christ as Savior, you are part of His family. So as God speaks and deals with your heart, and he, God has to do things to things that He wants you to do in your life, would you come and get it right with Him and make it straight? To accept him and not reject him anymore. So as we sing this morning, did you come? Number 563.